This is WCBA.TV. What the mind can conceive, the heart believe, you can achieve. This is Colonel Oscar Poole speaking. Friends, I have with me today, as my special guest, Lynn Hayes. Lynn Hayes, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm glad to be here with you, Oscar. It's good to be with you. And we have just concluded a great service. Yes, we had a wonderful time. The Lord was really rich. And what did we talk about? Well, we talked about the now. We talked about the energy that God is in the moment. The, you, you mean the I am? Yes, the we'll, I am moment of God. We'll get around to that. Uh, I've known you for 33 years, since uh, 67? Uh, 77. 77. Yeah. And uh, that's 23 and 10. That's 33. Yeah. And uh, how did we meet? Uh, you... Drove in my shop. I had a tire store in a garage in Chatsworth, and you drove in my shop in an old car. Well, what did I say? Well, you were running your car down. You were talking about it being a wreck. or. A... I said, this is a wreck trying to find a place to happen. <laughs> yes, and I told you not to call it that, not to say that. You snared by the words of your mouth. Well, I began, during that time, I began a journey of confessing the word uh, through Charles Capps. He was an inspiration to me, and I was pastor of the Methodist Church here in Chatsworth. Now, were you a pastor then? No, I started pastoring in 79. Uh, two years later. Yes, yes. But anyhow, we've been a great friends all all during the... Just imagine that. 33 years of friendship. That's, not, that's, that's worth something, isn't it? That is something. You know, 33 is a master number, and there are many numbers in the Hebrew language, and 33 happens to be one of those master numbers. Well, you, you know... Uh, I've never seen a man change, but that's what that's your theology. Transforming change? Yes, I think that the great work of transformation is that which is taking place in the earth at the present moment now. You mean there is a change going on now? Oh yes, yes, I think that the whole earth, especially the peoples on the earth are gro- going through great transformation. You mean this is a new paradigm? Yeah, the old, the song, old John Lennon's song, that we are being one, that, that we are being drawn into this oneness, and I believe that's happening. Now. And we are, are experiencing some new hymn writers for this day, yes. th- this new age. Yes, a, a, yes. We've, we've been afraid of that word new age, but it's a, it is a new age. It it? Is, well, when you live in new the day. now moment, it's always new, because everything God makes, His tender mercies are new every day, every moment. Well, now, we're throwing around the uh, the name Age of Aquarius. Are we, uh, the scientists tell us that, uh, astrology says that. Uh, t- say a word about that. Well, Jesus told us in Luke's gospel that when you see him bearing the water pitcher, and follow him into the house. And when you look at the astrological signs, you realize that the one of the astrological signs is Aquarius. And the sign of Aquarius is a man carrying a water pitcher, a pouring out the word water is for information, knowledge, and that's what's happening. God is pouring out revelation knowledge in the earth. And I think of uh, Joel chapter 2, but, but I will pour out my spirit upon all all. All flesh. All flesh. That's all, it, that's all peoples. Everybody. All peoples, not, tongues, nations, not, kindreds. Yes. Not just a few who've been saved and sanctified. <laughs> <laughs> all peoples. Uh, I think that I don't hardly hear that term much much anymore. Uh, we have new ways of interpretation or a, a new system of hermeneutics. That's a big word. Herman Udix. <laughs> yeah, you know, well, Ecclesiastes says there's nothing new under the sun. However, we, if you're living in the moment, you're always living in something that's new. It just means it's fresh. It's like having fresh manna. God said, I'm not going to give you enough manna to last you for two or three days a week. It's poured out each day, daily. So science, namely astrology, and uh, and. Uh, True Bible interpretation are one, right? Yes. I mean, that's what science is all about, is looking for truth. Well, Lynn, I, I have noticed that you are a great, have become a, what I call a great Hebrew scholar, especially in Genesis chapters 1, 2, and 3. Uh, say a word about Hebrew. Well, for me, my, my journey has led me into a research study of the Hebrew language and especially the Hebrew code to try to understand what was being conveyed to us. And so when I began to study the he- the book of Genesis, which actually means birthing, 
being drawn out, and that's what's happening to us. We're being drawn out. We're being birthed into this great dimension of now. And so Genesis 1, 2, and 3 begins to lay the foundation. And so I have a teaching, and I talk about the ABCs of the Hebrew code, the Alif, which is the first letter of the Hebrew uh, alphabet alphabet code and understanding what that's about friends this man can preach on genesis one uh, one or two or three verses he can go all day <laughs> and i do want you to come back on this program and give us a more extensive uh teaching about about these things what let's talk about god who is god uh, who did god say he was to to moses well, on the mountain, God began to reveal Himself through the burning bush to Moses, and God said, "I am." And in the Hebrew, the Tetragrammaton is E H I H Eha Aha, which is the root word for the word Elohim. And if you'll read Genesis one, it's always the word Elohim that describes the picture of God, the I am. And so, when Moses come off the mountain, the Tetragrammaton got transliterated as J-H-V-H, or J-H-W-H, Jehovah. And when you begin to study the Hebrew Code, you begin to realize that the E-H-I-H, Elohim, and the J-H-V-H, Yehovah, are characteristics of our spiritual nature and our egoic nature. I know I was taught in seminary, they had Yahweh was a, a... Precursor to uh, uh, Jehovah, is that right? Yes, Yahweh become the tribal god of the nation of Israel. Or it, the it, Jewish had, people. it had no vowels, right? They added vowel sounds just to give a pronunciation because it was really it's just Jehovah. a code. It's a formula. You speak of code. What do you mean code? Well, for instance, each letter number in the Hebrew alphabet is a code for, for or formula for energy. Which God is. That's what God is. God is energy. It tells us in Numbers that God is not a man. And since God is not a man, my question was, well, what is God? And I come to realize that God is light. And what is light? Light is energy. It's this pulsating energy that fills the airways. It fills everything. It's all and in all. Well, you know, we are hearing the word energy a lot in many circles, uh, not just uh, church circles or, or so-called Christian circles, but all around us. I've been hearing it in daily conversation. And so you equate, I think I, I, I glean from you today, you equate energy with spirit. Yes, I think energy is another way of saying spirit, and I say spirit is another way of saying God. So that when we begin to understand these different words and realize we're talking about the same thing. And so when, when, a, when uh, my friends say, I'm energized, he's saying I'm spiritized, right? <laughs> yeah, or he could be saying I'm full of God. Yes, well, that that's a new form, isn't it? <laughs> that is new. That's definitely new. Well, it's good to be here today and to enjoy your fellowship, Lynn, as I have on several occasions. Uh, I was struggling with the I am. Uh, and the burning bush experience when Moses said, Who are you? He had been told to go over to Pharaoh and let my people go. And uh, he, he, he says, Who are you out there? Who are you? A bush? Here was a bush, an inanimate bush talking, according to the scripture there. And uh, who are you? He said, I am that I am. And I was struggling with the exclusivity of Jesus that the fundamentals make. I am the way, the, the truth. I am the truth, the, the way, the way, life. And no man comes to the Father except by me. And so I struggled with that until three years ago it dawned upon me that the I am lives in me. And Jesus, when he said, I am the way, he was talking about the great I am of the burning bush, right? Yes, he was using the same Hebrew code formula of the I am, the Iha Aha, E H I H, and actually he was referring to the I am is the way. And when he refers to I am is the way, it's an astrological pointer that's pointing us to the 12 astrological signs that surround the earth and constantly feed the earth with its energy. And so when he refers I am is the way, the way is a path or the journey that all man walks on that he might find his work of transformation. That sounds simple to me, and I'm, I'm glad to hear you tell that, because I have discovered that for myself. 
every time you say, I am going to go to town, or I am going over here, or you are invoking the name of God. You're invoking the energy of God to get you there, to get you back, to energize you, and to give you the power to be, to do. Well, this sounds great to me. Uh, uh, talk about the New Day. Are we in a new day? Yes, we are in a new day because a new day is the present day. It's the moment. It's the now moment. And that's where we, as the children of light, the children of God, that's where we are living. And that's where we're supposed to live. It's in that now moment, that new day, that fresh time. That's where the energy of God is at. You know, mo- most folks live in the past. And they have regrets about this and that. And they uh, hard on hard on themselves, or they live in the future, and leave out the now. Yes. It's so easy to get trapped in what I didn't do or what I did do, what I should have done or what I could have done. And so we all get trapped in those past or future moments, and it's getting free from those and learning to live now in the presence of God. I, I feel led to ask you to talk, talk about that meeting we had there in uh, Winston-Salem at, at Gary's in, in the restaurant. Yes, we uh, we were actually were in a motel lobby and we were in a uh, breakfast room and we began to experience the now moment of God. And Oscar and I started out very very early in the morning. We were in this about breakfast six, room about about, about six o'clock about or six. maybe earlier, and we just began to just refresh ourselves in the now moment, in the things of God. And as that began to unfold. By 8 o'clock, that breakfast room was packed full. And we met a lady named Barbara. Barbara Simons, I think. Barbara Simons from, from Texas. Texas. Yes. And she brought to us a, 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 some information and inspiration that turned made us alive, right? Oh, yes. She began to share with us some things that she was hearing from the now moment, or in other words, from God, the energy of the source. She began to share things with us, and the room became vibrant, both with people. We had we had one couple that was sitting over there in the background just listening. This man was in a wheelchair, and we noticed that they were both began to cry. They began to mm-hmm. weep. They were weeping because of the energy and the presence of God. Wasn't that amazing? It was rich. There was a presence there. Yes. Or we call it an anointing. Yes, it, of, yeah. of energy. It was a now moment of the spirit. Yeah. We, yeah. we were caught up. When, when we, we were. We were caught up and didn't go anywhere. We were there. That's right. <laughs> we we sat there and talked, and we exclaimed these things, and they inspired us as we were going on our journey. Yes, we were lifted into a dimension of spirit, but yet we didn't go anywhere. We had church. Yes, we did. <laughs> in a non-church. <laughs> in a non-church atmosphere. In a motel. In a motel breakfast room with just uh, a, a crowd of people. Well, I sure am enjoying this. Uh, you are going out to eat? Yes. I go, eat some of that physical stuff? Yeah, we, yes. We're going to go get some food. <laughs> well, I'm going to go back over to the barbecue. You know, we have a barbecue over in the in. LJ, or East LJ, the mayor gets mad when I say LJ. East LJ for you, Mac West. Think of that. Mac West is the mayor of East LJ. <laughs> well, it sure has been good to be here these few moments, and I leave you to you go to your place to eat, and I'm going to my place to eat. But what's your final word? Well, my final word is just to encourage everybody just to wake up and begin to listen. There is a beautiful message that God is beginning to say, I love you, and uh, just listen to that. Be drawn into that. I love you. Well, thank you, Lynn Hayes. And ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to WCBA.TV. What the mind can conceive, the heart believe, you can achieve. This is Oscar Poole speaking, and this has been a WCBA.TV production.